Hey guys, and welcome back to my true crime channel. Today's video is going to be all about the life and the tragic ending, unfortunately, of John Lennon. Just a little disclaimer, if you haven't already noticed, my voice is kind of in and out right now. I still wanted to film this video because I wanted to talk about everything after doing the research. I thought it was really interesting. But I do apologize if my voice cracks at all during the video or if it seems like my voice is kind of up and down or in and out. I'm trying my best to sound as clear as I can, but there might be a couple times where it kind of goes out a little bit. So I apologize if it seems like it's, I'm bursting your eardrums, but I'm sorry. So this is obviously another installment of the celebrity cases and I think that John Lennon is a really interesting case because it is considered more of an assassination than like a true crime case, but it is still a true crime case at the end of the day. Even if somebody's famous, they don't automatically deserve to be killed. So I thought it'd be interesting to look at his life leading up to his assassination and just his life in general. I do know that um, obviously being a former Beatle, John Lennon's life is very public and a lot of people know a lot about John Lennon. So I won't be going too in depth into his music or his time in the Beatles because that's all very public knowledge and that's all very, it's been talked about very many times. So I think there's a plenty of other good videos to talk about the music aspect of John Lennon. I wanted to talk about John Lennon, the person and the circumstances leading up to what happened. So if that interests you, let's just get right into it. John Winston Lennon was born October 9th, 1940 in Liverpool, Merseyside, England. And uh, John's father wasn't even present at his birth and he was not there for most of his life. He was kind of an absent father. Um, However, when John was four years old, his parents actually separated and got divorced. And he was raised by his maternal aunt named Mimi Smith. Now, John's mother, Julia, who he did stay in contact with, he, uh, she remarried, but she would visit John at Mimi's house very often. She ended up being John's introduction to music, so she taught him how to play banjo, how to play piano. She also was the one to buy him his first guitar. And John was very close with Julia. He really loved his mom. They spent a lot of time together. However, in July of 1958, Julia was actually fatally struck by a car which was being driven by an off-duty police officer and this was really devastating for john and he considered this probably the one of the most if not the most traumatic moments of his entire life it took him a long time to ever really be the same i guess you could say and it just really affected him pretty deeply. Now, at 16, he formed a band that would eventually actually form into what we know today as the Beatles. And at this time, it was with a few other members that wouldn't be in the Beatles, but this group was called the Quarrymen. Now, on July 6th, 1957, John met Paul McCartney and invited him to join the Quarrymen. And this began sort of a lifelong friendship and partnership with Paul McCartney, which we know as the legendary songwriting duo of Lennon and McCartney, which was John Lennon and Paul McCartney, who would write very famous and iconic songs, and they were obviously the songwriting duo that wrote for the Beatles. Now, as far as the Beatles, John Lennon is obviously most known for his time in the Beatles, and he was alongside three other members in this group, obviously Paul McCartney, who I just mentioned, there was also Ringo Starr, who was the drummer, and George Harrison, who was the lead guitarist. John Lennon was considered the leader or the co-leader in the group alongside Paul McCartney and he was definitely one of the most famous members out of all of them and as we know today the Beatles went on to become one of the biggest musical groups in musical history they broke all sorts of records and they are a very iconic and famous group now when John was 21 in 1962 he married a woman named Cynthia Powell and they ended up having a son together named Julian, who they actually named after John's mother who had passed away, Julia. But the couple ended up not 
clicking as a couple, so they ended up divorcing in 1968. Their relationship was also especially hard during the time of Beatlemania, which is known as the time where the Beatles were at the height of fame and everybody knew who they were. And this was really hard for Cynthia, especially because she had to, they had to keep their relationship private and they could not be very public about the fact that they were married. Even though a lot of people knew that he was married, obviously a lot of girls had a crush on him or wanted him in a different way. And that's why the Beatles were so popular was because a lot of girls had crushes on them. So it was, I think, hard for Cynthia to kind of take a back seat to John's career in that way. Now, on March 20th, 1969, John actually got remarried to a woman named Yoko Ono, who a lot of people know as his wife. And she was a Japanese avant-garde artist. She was very into art and music, and they had actually met in 1966 when John was still with Cynthia. But there, as far as I know from what I found, there was no romantic interest at that time until later when they met up again after he had already divorced Cynthia. Now also in 1969, after getting married to Yoko, not right after, but the same year, they did end up, John ended up deciding to leave the Beatles along with the other members of the group all leaving. It was kind of a mutual group disbandment. And in 1970, John Lennon came back and released his first solo album, which was called John Lennon slash The Plastic Ono Band, which was what Yoko Ono was known for musically, was The Plastic Ono Band. And this music was kind of more experimental. It wasn't the same music that he was doing in The Beatles. It was much more abstract, I guess you could say. And John moved to New York in the September of 1971, and he lived in the place that he lived in with Yoko until his the time of his death, and they lived in the Dakota building. Now, during the first couple of years that John and Yoko were in America, they actually received constant threats of deportation from the United States government. So this was at the time of the Nixon administration, so they kept threatening to deport them and they wouldn't really tell them why. And it came out later that they actually were trying to deport them because of their massive and aggressive stance against the Vietnamese war. Now, John and Yoko were very actively against war. They were very much in this hippie time of like, you know, make love, not war, peace rules all, all of this sort of stuff that we saw, like think like, you know, Woodstock kind of vibes, like, um, and he was very, public, obviously being a public figure and a famous person, he was very public about his beliefs that the Vietnamese war should not be happening and how against it he was. And this is obviously a bad look for the United States government who is sending soldiers to Vietnam for this war. So they tried to get him deported. Unfortunately, it did not work and they ended up being able to stay in um, New York. And after the Nixon administration was gone, he officially was given the title of a permanent US citizen. So in 1975, on John's birthday, actually his 35th birthday, they ended up having a son and they named him Sean. So on the morning of December 8th, 1980, John had spent his morning in a photo shoot for Rolling Stone. And I believe this photo shoot was also with Yoko Ono. They ended up rele releasing this magazine after his death. And they actually did this just right at his apartment, which was the seventh floor of the Dakota building. After that, he went to record some more music for his upcoming album, which was at the Record Planet studio. So at around 5 p.m., John and Yoko walked to a limousine which was waiting to take them to the studio. And during this time, he signed autographs for fans that were waiting outside. He posed for pictures with them. And during this time, notably, he signed a copy of his new album, Double Fantasy, for a fan who's going to come up later named Mark Chapman. So who is Mark Chapman? Mark David Chapman was born on May 10th, 1955 in Fort Worth, Texas. And he was actually raised in the state of Georgia by his father, David. And his father was actually a sergeant in the US Air Force. Now throughout his adult life, Mark worked in various Chicago churches, um, as well as helping Vietnamese refugees in Arkansas for the charity World Vision. 
And Mark ended up moving to Hawaii and got a job as a printer in the Castle Memorial Hospital in Honolulu in 1977. So in December of 1980, when all of this is going to happen that I was previously talking about, he was 25 years old and was married to Gloria Abe. And it is said that he was suffering from serious mental illness, including uh, clinical depression. And in 1977, he had actually attempted suicide but was not really given any treatment for this. And he was a self-diagnosed schizophrenic. I thought that was important to mention. He was never diagnosed by a medical professional, but he self-diagnosed himself as a schizophrenic. So getting back to the night at hand, after their time at the studio, John and Yoko pulled back up in their limousine at around 10.50 p.m. and started walking back towards their building, this time not really paying attention to the fans that were standing there because it was late and they didn't want to really sign autographs or post for pictures at this time. And that is when Mark Chapman pulled a gun from his back pocket and fired five shots at John's back. Now, one of the shots had missed and shattered a window in the lobby of the Dakota building, but the other four all hit John in his back and his shoulder, and some of the injuries included he they punctured his lung and severed an artery to his heart, and this caused him to bleed profusely all of a sudden everywhere from all of his wounds and also out of his mouth. So John shouted out, I'm shot, and he, as he fell to the ground, and a concierge for the Dakota building actually ran over and attended to John while he was calling 911. Luckily, six police officers arrived very quickly on the scene and they found Mark just standing there and he was right next to the gun, which he had dro just dropped on the ground. And he was also holding a copy of the book Catcher in the Rye. And Mark made no attempts to resist arrest and he was just immediately taken down to the station. And when the officers arrived to John, he was face down in a pool of blood in the lobby. And after seeing his injuries, the police officers realized that there would not be enough time to wait for an ambulance, even though it was on his way. So they just carried him to the back of the police car and drove him to the hospital, which was not far at all. And one of the police officers during this time when looking at him in the back seat of the police car actually recognized him and asked if he was John Lennon. And he responded, he like, tried to nod a little bit, which he really couldn't because of his injuries, and he replied yes. So they all arrived to at the Roosevelt Hospital at around 11 p.m. And the police carried in John, pleading for help from the hospital staff that this man was bleeding out and probably dying. However, even the second that they had entered the hospital building, at that time, John already had no pulse and he was not breathing. So they worked on John for about 10 minutes to attempt to save his life, but unfortunately it, it was not successful and he was pronounced dead at 11.15 p.m. And it was reported that he had lost more than 80% of his blood. This was obviously devastating, not just for his family, but for the nation, for everybody. Pretty much everybody knew who John Lennon was. And it was a pretty devastating thing to happen, especially since nobody really had a clear motive for why anybody would want to kill John Lennon, especially since he was so, such a pacifist and so anti-war, nobody could really wrap their heads around why somebody would kill him. So the day after John's death, Yoko, John's wife, announced that he would not be having a funeral, but instead they would have a private cremation for just his family and close friends. and. On December 14th, so that his fans could still have a way to honor him, Yoko held a 10 minute silence for him in New York's Central Park. And this was attended by over 225,000 people, which just shows how many people just in the New York area really loved John and wanted to honor him. And in August of 1981, Mark was sentenced to 20 years to life for the second degree murder of John Lennon. And he is still in prison to this day, and he's been denied parole on 11 separate occasions at this point. Now, I did want to get into a couple of theories exist as to why Mark Chapman decided to, rent, for seemingly no reason, kill John Lennon. One of the theories is that Mark, before this happened, was a really committed big Beatles fan. However, when John Lennon released the very controversial comments about the Beatles being bigger than Jesus, 
it was said that Mark Chapman, who was, who considered himself a born again Christian, took this comment very offensively and it might have really upset him that John had said this. Another theory is that he might have seen John Lennon as hypocritical since he professed his beliefs about only needing love, that's all anybody needs, and you know, nobody really needed earthly possessions and not to be greedy. Um, however, John was very involved in, you know, his multi-millionaire lifestyle. He had a lot of very nice things, and this might have come across as hypocritical to Mark. Another highly relevant fact about Mark Chapman's motive is the existence of the Catcher in the Rye book that was in his hands at the time of the murder. Because inside of the cover, he had actually written, this is my statement. And if you don't know what Catcher in the Rye is about, it is about the main character, Holden Caulfield, kind of realizing that there are fakes and phonies within the world and stuff like that. And he, this might have been indirect reference to John Lennon, what I said before about him being a little hypocritical, a little phony. And he said that he was living his life inside of this book and he saw himself as Holden Caulfield and he believed that he was acting out what was meant to be his destiny, basically. So that is the life and tragic ending of John Lennon. There's not a ton of information about his early life or his time before the Beatles, so I'm sorry if that seemed a little short. I wanted to do what I can to explain what happened, and it is really sad what happened and what we could have, what he could have done for peace on earth and what he could have done musically even for the world if his life hadn't been cut short. And I can't even imagine how Yoko Ono must have felt. One, having to deliver the news to their very young son that his father had just passed, but also the fact that the murder happened literally right in front of her and she had to watch her husband die is pretty sad. It's just a really sad situation. And I know that a lot of people have heard about John Lennon's assassination, but not a lot of people know the details of it. So I wanted to give a little bit more clarity into what actually happened. But I hope you guys enjoyed hearing me talk about this case today. Let me know if you are a big John Lennon or Beatles fan. I myself am a pretty big Beatles fan. I don't know much about John Lennon's music by himself, his solo work, but I am pretty involved in the Beatles music. I really like it. So let me know your thoughts on this case and let me know if there are any celebrity cases that you want to see next. I think we have about two more videos left for the celebrity series before we get started into another new series. So let me know if there's any new series that you guys are interested in seeing. And as always, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to consider subscribing to my channel. It really helps me out a lot. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.